Okay, Dan Roberts here in the FOS studio in New York, and I've got Kia Clark, the CEO of the New York Liberty in the WNBA. Hi, Kia. Hi, how are you? Great. Thanks for coming in in person. Happy to be here. Love chatting in person in studio. Uh, let's start with the big picture headline, at least for us. It was a big story, and we still consider all of the impacts and ripples of this, the new media deal yes. for the WNBA and happening at a huge time for the league. I mean, the explosive growth of the WNBA right now is obvious to everyone. It's a $2.2 billion media deal. Of course, depending on whom you ask, I think it was, um, it was maybe Reggie's sister, right? Cheryl? Cheryl Miller. Cheryl Miller, thank you, said <laughs> it's still not enough. <laughs> but tell me what you make of the new media deal and what does it mean for you guys as a team moving forward? What can you now do? Yeah, so for starters, I have to say we couldn't have planned it. It couldn't have been planned any better to have the explosive viewership that we have in this 24 season coming off of a great and amazing 23 season, but the soon to be expiration of the current deal and looking toward what would the new deal be, um, incredibly it, it just opportunistic moment for sure. Uh, the size of the deal, I think it just, it showcases the astronomical growth, the evolution of this league, um, the need and the desire for women's sports content, WNBA content um, at a price tag that for me, you know, regardless of what Cheryl has said or what anyone said, I have not seen all the figures and how this is going to, you know, trickle down and what the waterfall will be. What does this mean for teams specifically? I don't have all the detail yet, but when you look at that number and you really look at the longevity of the league mm -hmm. several, several years from for you know, the foreseeable future, people will have the opportunity to consume WNBA basketball in a major way. And that makes me proud. I'm super ecstatic to be a part of it. Um, how it actually pans out um, remains to be seen to a certain extent though, but I'll tell you it's up no matter what, what no matter what way you, you know, you slice it, um, it's a benefit and it really does show, um, it's a testament to our growth. We had, um, you know, two Knicks players, Brunson and Hart on the podcast and you know, obviously getting the, the new WNBA media deal happened at the same time we got the new NBA media deal. And actually Josh Hart said that this new deal means that I can probably play for longer. And I thought that was interesting. I mean, will there be an impact here on the salary cap for, for the WNBA? Potentially. Again, you know, I can't speak to the detail of how that deal was negotiated and what you know, the ultimate trickle down will be to the teams at a time when we're expanding, but there's no question that that growth at the league level at national distribution will have an effect on our entire ecosystem. I think, you know, uh, another addendum to that is the ability for what national media rights looks like to affect what local media rights looks like. Yeah. We're super excited here in New York in a huge market to have a new partnership with uh, Fox. So, you know, mm -hmm. Fox 5, the affiliate being our local distributor um, is also, you know, a tentacle of this is all growing and it's growing at a great time we just want to be accessible to our fans. And mm -hmm. I think that's reflected in the national um, footprint and it's reflected in the, in the local footprint. And the continuation of that is going to be super important, I think, as people have fandom toward the league, um, but also to, you know, what is your team in your market? That's, that's absolutely right. And you still need the, the local, you know, in some sports, whether it's the RSNs, there's still the national and the local and both important. Um, before we zoom in on the team in, in New York, one more macro question for you. Why now, in terms of the momentum? I mean, what is it, and people like to debate the Caitlin Clark effect and just, just how much a percent is thanks to her directly, but it's like, you know, we, we actually last spoke to each other during the year of the bubble mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in 2020 or 2021, and that felt like a huge year for the WNBA, and yet now you look and it's like, this is the year, this is the tipping point. What do you think is the big driver? Yeah, I think all of that matters. Um, I actually appreciate that you mentioned that you know, COVID conversation that we had because I, as a leader of a team here in New York, but someone who's been around the league for a really long time, I haven't looked at this growth or this moment as it was zero to 100. It really was a bubble season during a crisis in the world and there was a captive audience. That was actually the first year that the, the ratings were up, you know, a significant percentage. And that was really, well, duh, if you build it, they will watch. Yeah. If you put it on, yeah. people will watch. And it sort of moved and shifted from there. And, you know, not to go completely granular to local, but um, I think the buildings that we play in. Mm -hmm. You take a team, an original team like New York, and we had been in flux and we had been, you know, sort of moving nomadically around New York City. And in that same time frame between the 2020 and 2024 seasons, we plant roots at Barclays Center. For us, that's a, that's a change. For the whole league, 
that lifts up attendance, that lifts up eyeballs, it gives us a different opportunity. So I think that's another peg on this ladder that we were climbing already. Um, but make no mistake, um, star power matters. Um, the the uh, restructuring of the roster um, that you know our, our general manager Jonathan Kolb, with the support of our ownership group, Bill, in you know establishing a championship caliber team, that means a lot. And you have the same thing that was you know a, a repeat championship contender in the Aces. You have you know in, anyone can win in this league sort of mentality, and these these teams were getting stronger. That's another gradual shift toward it. Uh, but make no mistake, um, the catalyst, the match that lit the fire, and I can't attribute percentages. I can't say, you know, this growth is directly attributable to that, but this rookie class overall, yeah. um, Caitlin, no question, Angel, no question. We had been um, just <laughs> begging for that crossover from the NCAA tournament. Mm to leak into the WNBA draft for many, many years. Yeah. I've been involved in this league for nearly 19 years, and it was actually definitively a strategy You know, over a decade ago. Um, we would host the draft in the same city as the Final Four at one point, and it just never took off. Um, we needed the right mindset, time and space. I truly believe we needed that graduality, that build up, that lead in for this moment to be what it is right now. Yeah, and um, it's Sabrina, and it's Asia Wilson, and the existing stars, it, and absolutely. now you add the big rookies. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny, you mentioned the Aces and being back-to-back -back champions. I mean, I was at the game on Sunday and watched you guys beat them. Yes. And I just had a terrific experience. I mean, let's, you know, you mentioned the building. Let's talk about the building because yeah. uh, the crowd was excellent. I mean, that could easily have been a crowd for a Nets game, and it would have been great and fine as an mm -hmm. NBA crowd. Mm -hmm. So engaged, and also so much happens even in between quarters. You know, the, the in-person entertainment, everyone stays in their seats to see what's Ellie gonna come out and do, or sure. what, what kind of dance crew are we gonna have? So just talk to me a little bit about um, that experience and the, the crowds that you guys get, not to mention all the celebrities and athletes who are, sure. who are courtside. Yeah, for a long time, I think there was so much focus on how many people are in the building. Um, what is attendance? Attendance is really the only metric that's measured every single game every single year, year over year, and a laser focus on, oh, it's not sold out, it's not enough people. And we have this really cool combustion where it's attendance up 64% year over year. Um, we already had a 40% increase the year before that. So you have more people, but at the same time, the entertainment quality is bar none. Um, a carefully curated experience. Um, some have called it the best summer party in Brooklyn. Um, but the music, the celebrities, the hospitality experience, t-shirts into the crowd, these are not new things. It's just how does this fit? How does the, this brand fit specifically in Brooklyn um, and with a, with a fan base that has folks who have been around for 28 years and folks who came out yesterday. Mm. Um, and bringing yep. everyone together and we're rooting for the same team and the same thing. And sometimes they're rooting for a star on the other team. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with cheers for Angel or cheers for Asia um, in, the, in the building. Because when you are really in the vibe and in the zone, um, everybody is experiencing yeah. joy. Um, we're creating a memory for, you know, and, and that could be a memory for a little kid. Um, it could be a memory for someone who's uh, trying to get an Ellie, a selfie. Um, all of that matters. All of it is driving, to get, jiving together. And I'm super, super um, proud of our game presentation team who makes that happen on each and every night, uh, coupled with our marketing team who's really just trying to drive content. So for for the people in the building, whether you know that's the 13,000 we're averaging or the nights where we have 17,000, um, I've even seen posts on social media where you know it's like turn up the vol the volume when Leo Fibich hits this hits this shot. Mm. I want that to generate and resonate and and really become you know the thing that people are coming for. In addition to W's, oh, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. we 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 yeah, want wins important. too. W's in the W. Yes. Um, you're totally right that it's not just as simple as here was the attendance number and let's focus on the number. Now that said, as we grow, I mean, could you look at a time where you fully open up that upper bowl for every game? Yeah, I'm, I mean, super proud to say for the entirety of the 24 season, we have opened up stairs for every single game. 
Okay. Um, there's demand. Um, we've had to introduce new um, hospitality areas. We have a wait list for premium seating. Um, of course, the best seats in the house are the ones that you, you know, no brainer, those would go first. But now it's a must see game mm -hmm. and a must see seat. Um, and we're just working to manage that accordingly as well. Uh, but absolutely, full arena sellouts every single night is is the plan, um, and not just for New York. This is one of those right. things where the strength of the league is what really matters, um, and um, attendees, no question, but you need to create atmosphere. We want our players to be proud to play at home, but almost, you know, I won't say dependent, but, you know, they've said it themselves. You know, we are counting on you. We are counting on this crowd, and nothing makes me feel happier than that. Uh, we are talking about the building. We're talking about being at Barclays. Let's talk a little bit about team ownership mm -hmm. and uh, the Joe Tai and, and Claire. You know, how do you work with them and what's their leadership been like yeah. um, for the growth of the team? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I can't not stay. I work for the best owners um, in, in this league and maybe in all of women's sports, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, they have truly seen the value and really been committed to equity um, for this franchise uh, in a way that I hadn't seen. Um, and this, I'm talking about someone who studied the WNBA for a really long time. Uh, Clara in particular, as our governor, uh, just gives so much of her mind share. Um, this is not just about financial investment, but it's really care for the players, for the staff. Um, to, to cultivate and nurture and really have the wherewithal during COVID is when we staffed up, quite frankly. Um, I came to Barclays uh, with, you know, essentially a shoestring of a staff because we were playing in a really small arena. And during a time when a lot of sports teams were actually uh, laying people off because there were no games being played, um, it was a conversation, uh, a, a, an amazing conver series of conversations where we talked about being ready for coming out of the pandemic and calling Barclays home. Um, and on both the business side and the basketball side from performance team and coaching staff, um, they really have had a, a real commitment to investing to make sure that we could excel, we could perform at a really high level, that we would be a championship team. And that has not wavered for any of these five years that they've owned the team. Um, it's just such a symbiotic relationship. Um, there's expectations, um, there's goals that are set, but it's always a two-way conversation. I really appreciate that um, about both of them. Man, it's so interesting how, how much of a foundation was laid from the COVID years to now. Um, let's zoom back out and, and look kind of macro at the league. I got two more questions for you. One is, I'm always interested in just, um, you know, you can call it anic data, but the litmus test of the conversation factor, people talking about it more. You were going to come in for an interview sooner, but you had a family reunion that you do every two years, a huge gathering. Did you notice, you know, obviously your own family members know who you are and know your association with the team, but did you notice this year much more interest in and questions about the Liberty and the WNBA than, than in past years? Absolutely. You know, it's, it's interesting though, the tone has changed. Um, I think my, even my extended family knew, they've always known that I worked in sports. Um, when you talk about uh, a reunion that's been in existence almost for the entirety of my life, um, the reunion started in the late 70s. Um, so. I've always attended and so like I was the kid who played basketball, who was walking around the re reunion with a basketball to, oh, you know, she's working in the, the industry now, good for her. So this season, um, conversion. Mm -hmm. um, our, the states represented are uh, Connecticut, which is where I'm from. Uh, the home uh, sort of base of where my family originated um, was South Carolina. Uh, Detroit has a contingency, oh. Maryland has a contingency, uh, the Maryland DC area, and then New York, New Jersey. Um, I have Liberty fans in all five of those states, I'm proud nice. to say, and that was the difference this year. Um, people were asking about shirts and hats and right. all the things, but it was more so, I'm following, mm -hmm. it's resonating. I knew that that you know, would be different for my friend circle. It was really warming for it to be my family as well. That's cool. Of course, in Connecticut, there's the sun. We'll play at Mohegan. Oh, uh, all the Connecticut people are, are switching teams when it, <laughs> when, 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 when it comes to You're the stealing sun. stealing fans. Nice, We're, nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, again, when I was there at the game, it just occurred to me the growth runway for this league. I mean, there's only 12 teams, and there's just so much growth potential. We know that. We've talked about that. 
But there's another thing happening, it seems to me, and that is the huge explosion and interest in investing in women's sports writ large. There's WNBA, there's NWSL. It seems to me like WNBA is kind of leading the way. Do you think about that and think about how many women's sports leagues, I mean, you know, Bob Iger and Willow Bay investing in an NWSL team. Everyone's kind of taking their cues, I think, from the huge success and eyeballs on the WNBA and that effect there. 100%. Again, you know, being the, the league with the most longevity, uh, being the league that is the sister to the NBA, um, and being the league that, quite frankly, had tons of naysayers for a really long time, yes. um, it's validating and it feels redemptive. And I'm very welcoming of the other sports teams and leagues. I think it, it's actually helpful to the WNBA to have an ecosystem where the comparison and, more importantly, the business case is the focus. Um, it, you know, the rhetoric a lot of times had been charity or mm -hmm. I just need to fill a couple dates in my building. But when you have titans of industry saying this is how and you know where I would like to invest my money, um, I want to get in the sports game. I'm not just getting into this because I can afford a women's sports team. I'm choosing to invest in the women's sports team. Um, there's scarcity in being an owner. There's scarcity in operating yeah. a team, right? So creating this new wave um, and to be a part of it, be a part of what will ultimately go down in history as a turning point in professional sports. Um, I'm so proud to say that I've been here in the WNBA doing just that, um, along with a lot of other folks. Some of us, uh, we joke around like the OGs of the league. Um, if you've been around for you know 10 plus years, this wasn't where we were. It feels good to be leading from the front and, you know, um, all power to those other leagues. There's lots of people and friends and former colleagues that I know that are starting up some of those teams and working at in, in the league office on some of those leagues. I think it's wonderful for, for all of women's sports. It's great. And people see that it's a legitimately great investment too. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Kia, thanks so much. Thank you.